This is a moment that I will never forget. This kid is a little different. You got to bring it. The K wanted to bring it. He's finna give y'all buckets. Like, this man is league bound. Y'all don't even understand. He just, he knew he was better than everybody. There's so many thoughts running around that you can't hold on to one for so long. You're thinking about so much, but at the same time, you're thinking about nothing. It wasn't easy, but here we are. He needed to fly. They're gonna give him that work for sure. This is tough, man. Yeah, this is my welcome. first time really coming into one for real. Ah, welcome, man. So this is the professional stuff. Oh, I ain't never made a beat. Hold on, put me on. Here, bro, you I got... Could, you can help me make a beat? Straight up. What's up? If I make a beat that's hard, we can get on there? Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> lock in, right? All right, man. You right, Come on, man. Like, I lock in, yeah, bro. All right, I'm all right there. If we get it, we just going to drop maybe a snippet. You feel me? Yeah, we ain't going to drop give them all We're not giving them too much. We're not going to give them too much. So you can just put a hit right on the right on the three every single time, especially for, like, hip-hop stuff. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, bet. Okay, bet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can hang mm -hmm. in the mix. You can feel. How Leo on the song to be, bro? Lee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God, hello. Because I'm yeah. <laughs> So you want to learn how I got to Detroit? I'm trying to hit it from the beginning. First, we got to take it back to Arlington. This area right here is dogs. It's a lot of kids that's out here that don't get the same hype. Dallas is, you know, the big city. Everybody's thinking about Dallas, so that's what makes us the sleeper. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what are we trying to talk about, fool? Man, I don't even know how we lit, boys. Bring me to the lifestyle. <laughs> Kate says he won't claim Dallas anymore because he wants to put Arlington on the map. We tell people we're from Arlington now. They make them ask us, where is Arlington? <laughs> I got a couple of things I want to say. The guy that's from Arlington, they're going to give him that work for sure. You know, when the Cowboys play and they zoom in on the city, you know, we kind of feel a sense of pride when they say live from Arlington. All right. Yeah, sir. Uh, what are we going to call this? Uh, overtime? Yeah. Overtime, yeah, that's right. Cade was a happy kid. A loving kid, you know, competitive, very, very competitive. He is the baby of the family, but in so many ways, he has such a special relationship with all of us. Big head, he had a huge head, <laughs> didn't match his body yet. <laughs> it was tough on me. Being the youngest, my brother and sister had their own way of pushing me and, you know, toughening me up. You know, we still find a way to, to always come together and make sure each other's straight. And that's what you want in your siblings. What you said, Bucks and Six? Seven. 
help him out. I want to see CP win and retire. You know, he was an all-star every year until his last year in LA, I think. Yeah, Don't keep that in there if I'm lying. <laughs> we got a fact check now. <laughs> fact check. <laughs> Cannon has the traits of an oldest child. He is kind of straight and narrow. If there's a perfect role model, Cannon is it. And, you know, Cannon didn't bring no drama around. Amazing how much it helped. It took a lot off my and Carrie's plate. He was six years older than me, nine years older than Kate, so part parent, part brother. Cannon's just always been, like, on track. Even in Young and Hoops, I've never just, that I can remember somebody saying, Little boy, like, and I felt that. <clears throat> yeah, you was a big dog when you was little. You kind of worry about whether they're going to have a close relationship with that big of an age gap. Everything Cannon did from playing baseball to football to basketball, Kay was there for everything. I remember times in the front yard, I'd kick it off to him and he'd have to score on me. You know, I'd trip him and, and he'd fall down and want to start crying and, you know, Big brother, you know, you just try to boss him up a little bit in the best ways that you can. I couldn't ask for a better older brother, honestly. You know, he, he pushed me. He didn't make things easy on me, but at the same time, he encouraged me and, you know, gave me confidence. You know, as I learned things, I tried to just pour them into him as, as soon as I could. Honestly, he was just kind of my guinea pig, like. <laughs> Cannon was a beast. Um, I, I say it all the time. Cannon could have went to the NBA. When he was in high school, he was like that guy. I remember a ton of college letters coming into the house. Cannon was like the early version of Cade. Big time shot blocker. You know, I could score around the basket, I had to go shoot and touch. Maybe it's just because I was his little brother, and you know, my eyes are, I'm watching what he's doing, but he was like always the main attraction in the games that I saw. Ashton would train Cannon. Cade was right there, along for the ride. Moody was like heaven, the biggest and best place to me at the time. What do you think of this place, man? When I came here, I. I didn't even dream of this. This is ridiculously nice. I always thought, like, you got to be really big time to play in these arenas. It made me want to work even harder. And, you know, seeing Cannon get pushed like that by Ashton, I was way more willing to, you know, push myself. Kay will come to the gym and just be on the sideline. He'll see us doing ball handling. He'll just get his own ball and just pound the ball. Just do what we were doing on the sideline. It was a fantastic ride for the entire family, but I think Cade soaked a lot of that up. It's not about going number one. That's out of my control. We focus on putting in the work every day because success is no accident. I got a taste for coaching really young. My dad was a head coach for one of Cade's first YMCA teams and he let me be his assistant. That was when I first understood that I like helping other people get better. We put in a lot of time and I really, really did think that I, I, I had him. As far as going to the NBA and things like that. I knew that Cannon had the talent, but I knew that his passion was more for the coaching and the teaching. I thought that it was amazing that he was going to pursue that passion. He felt like, you know, coaching was his passion, and so he wanted to chase his passion. And Ashton just being so basketball loving, he wanted it so bad for Cannon. He said, Ashton, let me retire in peace. I just went in that zone and just shredded a tear, man. It was, it, was, it was a sad day for me. Ashton wanted me to be a pro more than I wanted to be a pro for myself. My heart wasn't in it anymore, and I was truly more interested in seeing my brother do well than myself in a, in a basketball sense. For Ashton, it was definitely like a, a blow to him.
I guess it all worked out because now Cannon has his passion. He gets to help me, and, and Ashton was even more motivated than ever. I think he kind of took that <laughs> and put, you know, all that frustration with that situation on me. Like, nah, you're going to work. I'm training his older brother. At the same time, looking to the sideline like, whoa, hey, he picking that up a little quick. That kind of brought that to my attention that this kid is a little different. As a trainer, Ashton's really high energy. A lot of pros that, that work with high-level trainers and then get to work with Ashton typically prefer working with Ashton. He does a good job understanding what guys' strengths and weaknesses are coming into the workout. So me growing up, I was good in basketball, just off the talent. I, I never worked out. I went to school with a kid named Avery Bradley. I was better than him at that time in seventh to eighth grade. As we went to high school, he just took off because he was working out and I wasn't. So for me, I took that and I planted that in Cade's head. Eighth grade is when we started getting in the gym every day. At the time, Cade didn't understand why are we in the gym so long? Why are we working on this? Why are we going so hard? Because he was a kid. Having that, like your cousin is your trainer, is definitely different, but that was one place that we, we really bonded because we both loved to work, so on and off the court. That's somebody I can always go to about things and, and be comfortable with. He'll turn into a pro and a dog, like real talk. Train with him, uh, work hard, and he'll stick with you. He'll make you a pro, real talk. If you're from Arlington, you ain't never played on this court. You're not from Arlington. Kay didn't necessarily just grew up here. But it was times where he came and just played, you know, just to, you know, get some fouls and just become more of a dog. Playground basketball is, is everything. Like, that's real creativity. That's like the mo most pure fashion of basketball. Basketball is really an art, and I feel like if you can't be creative with it and come up with your own stuff, then you're never going to really have your own, you know, signature style to play for real. Coming out here and practicing my own game, things like that, you know, it helped me. Ashton and I, there's nothing we love more than, than helping Kate get better. That's kind of, that's kind of our singular focus right now. I thought Kay joining the Texas Titans was enormous for his career. I can't imagine there are better AAU programs than them. Going to the Titans was the first time he really was challenged by his peers. I played with them since fourth grade, so having a team that, you know, I had built loyalty with, I had, you know, real brothers with, things like that. I mean, that, that really taught me teamwork better than anything else. High school, you're going to coach what you have, and it's much more developmental. The AAU, it's more like an NBA type, type team where you're going to bring people in for specific needs. The Texas Titans, they really allowed him to transfer from just being a front court player to being a rebounder. They got to push and transition to then being a perimeter player. He was a, a jack of all trades, and that's kind of what you're seeing now with Cade is he's developed into an overall basketball player. 16U summer, I had a conversation with him and and really we just talked about what his strengths and weaknesses were. Kay was, I want to say, number two in the nation at the small four position. Cannon came up with a brilliant idea. I want him to play the point. So I was like, okay, yeah, of course. We want him to play the point. But Cannon said, no, I want him full-time point. I want him bringing it down all the time. So I was like, whoa. The doctor said he probably wouldn't be as tall as me, and so we kind of were looking for a physical advantage. I thought he needed to move down to a smaller position. My initial thoughts when Cannon said it, I was open for it because I played quarterback and point guard was always like the guy that's running the show. I wouldn't be the guy running the show, why not? As far as the point guard position, why he is so good at what he does is because he's a great communicator. He's not afraid to fail. He's not afraid to take a chance. He's not afraid to let somebody else have the spotlight. Cade is truly the general on the floor. Even from a young age, when he was playing in the post, he's always been a great passer. And as his handle continued to improve, I, I felt more and more comfortable that he could be maybe a Magic Johnson type. So we made the transition, and it was ugly at first. I had a learning curve for sure. I was struggling a little bit just with, you know, grasping the fact that, like, this is what is probably going to be best for my career, but it's not what's most comfortable right now. It was frustrating for them. Um, they will argue every day, practices, games, go home together arguing. My big brother, like, he's a real opinion that I've always valued and, and you know, what he says, like, I take to heart. So 
having that, like having him say, yeah, I think you should move to point guard. I think that was one of the OKs that I needed to, to make it happen and start pursuing it. It wasn't easy. I was the only one that felt like it was the best move until Cade bought into it. The local basketball heads and AAU guys and evaluators and stuff thought I was crazy, thought I was being selfish. Um, but here we are. While they're sleeping, I'm working. It's all part of the journey. This has always been the plan. Settling was never an option. Expand your game. <laughs> Get out there on the wing. <laughs> it ain't my fault. We all got assignments. You know what I'm saying? Sure. <laughs> so you get assigned to what people <laughs> believe in you to do. Being guards was supposed to be full-time jobs for us. But we had to add on to part-time bigs as well because, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We got the ball in our hands and we got to go do all this other stuff too. Poor thing. <laughs> Big fella calling out screams. I used to be with y'all, bro, until I had to do it all, you feel me? <laughs> and then y'all didn't, y'all went with me after that, bro. I made a transition, y'all stopped messing with me, bro. Who was y'all? The bigs. The bigs mess with me, but you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't claim no more. So I'm like, it's what up? You don't claim us. I've been claiming the bigs, bro. No, you haven't. You talking the noise right now, how you not a big? Because you a big talking noise. <laughs> so now, you know what I'm saying? That's what it is. You don't want to see me down there. On the block. Yeah. But I would never be uncomfortable. <clears throat> it wouldn't be no coach that You'd would. You'd lose. That's uncomfortable. But I'm saying, though, it would never be a game where, like, you would get a catch on the block no, and, no. Some, and anybody would ever be like, send help with me. Dude. Are you serious? Yeah, nah, I, wouldn't, I don't think so. I don't think so. You need help right or now. There, there's no. Send help right now. I've never just been a mismatch, bro. There's never been a time where I've been, like, outmatched like that, bro. Okay, I'll embarrass you on the block. I'm saying, you. it's cool if you score a couple times, you know what I'm saying? Embarrass. But, bro, I feel much more comfortable with me having to go guard you and then coming down and getting the screen and me, you know what I'm saying? For a game, bro. Yeah. I'm much more comfortable with that. Yeah. So I'm not getting I mean, that's why you're in the position. <laughs> so that's not embarrassing to me. I'm a big fan, bro, but this conversation started as you're losing weight, I'm gaining weight. All right. And you already couldn't see me down there. And it's just, we're just separating. Right. You think? <clears throat> Absolutely. You don't... No reps. You know I get it right off the couch. When he came up here as a freshman, he was varsity ready, and he proved it. Once he got to Bowie, that's when it started getting real, and I was like, okay, got something now. I went to school in North Arlington. He went to Bowie in South Arlington. I would talk trash to my whole boys basketball team for a whole week before the game and just be like, he's finna give y'all buckets. Like, this man is league bound. Y'all don't even understand. He's different level. Between his freshman year and his sophomore year, you know, he was probably one of the strongest players that we've had. I've, I've never had a kid that, that developed so much muscle tone and developed so much strength within one year. Coach Gratz was the first coach to really change my body in the weight room. I was probably like 165 when I got in there. But he, you know, he finally started allowing me to see changes in my body and start feeling athletic and things like that. Seeing that change in your body, it only adds a different wiggle to your game, a different kind of swag to your walk when you're getting on the court. Student session right here, man. It was lit. They was yelling out Cade. You know, you had camera guys and on the sideline, things like that. The atmosphere was crazy. Cade feeds off of the crowd. Cade, Cade loves that. Those were special nights. You left kind of feeling like you were really experiencing something really, really cool. It was a place that you need to get to. It was packed. It was almost like it was going to be sold out. Like you had to get here early. It was a great place to be at. 
on a Friday night especially. During his time when he was here, those two years, the atmosphere was, was unbelievable. His name is going to last forever here at Blue High School. All the best guys are in, you know, these prep leagues and, and prep schools. So it was important for me. I wanted to take that next step for my game. I wanted to challenge myself. And so we, we started doing the talking. We started, you know, exploring around a little bit. Once he started getting interest from, you know, Oak Hill, Prolific Prep, schools like that, then it became more of a reality. We started getting these calls. And then when I told my wife, I said, well, we better start looking into this. This kid is telling us he want to play on national schedule against the best around. And he meant it. I was fully locked in. I wanted to do it. Fully, like I, I was begging them every day. Um, my mom did not want to see me go at all. My pops was back and forth. He wanted to see me go, then he agreed with my mom. I mean, the decision took so long. He knew that he had to become ranked national. He had to play against the best. It was all about playing against the best and things like that, getting his name out there. I remember my sophomore year, I was watching the Geico National Championship, and it was Montverde and R.J. Barrett. And the whole time, the announcers keep talking about you know, how great of a, a program Montverde is. And so I just figured next year, at some point, I need to be playing either against Montverde or with Montverde, you know what I mean? My mom, her wall went up immediately. It wasn't a conversation she wanted to have, but you know, as he started playing better and better, it became pretty apparent that we got to get him out of the aquarium.